Okay, so with the upper arm done, we're going to move on now to building the lower arm. You can see where it connects in. It basically the connector is quite small if you consider how amazingly big and fuddy the arm's going to be, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Okay, so what I want to do is I actually deleted this polygon in the last one. I want to put it back. <laughs> Complete waste of time if you think about it. And let's zoom in on this polygon down here because I need to create a cylinder. So cylinder, auto grid, and I want to create it just down here on this one. Tiny bit bigger. And this is going to be the basis. Let's say three, F four. This is going to be the basis of um, the lower arm, because of course it's all going to pivot on this piece here. Oops, wrong way. So, just want to get it lined up, more or less. I can adjust it more exactly later. Okay, press those. Actually, I think I need to go a little bit more this way. There we go. And convert to edible polygon. Now, this should be called upper arm, and it's called sphere. Ooh, upper arm. O1. So of course this will be called lower arm O1. Lower? Lower arm O1. There we go. And from here we're going to be able to have muchos grande fun. It'd be magnifico. Eh? So, select these ones. And this is where our arms going to magically appear from, with the assistance of this big thing here as well. Super. So, just insert it, but not too much, and then go to the right viewport and view a line. Now, back in here again, do a quick rotate, and we're going to have it pull out to just there. Okay, and that's one base. Next base, <laughs> I like this bit. I'm just going to insert this a little. I'm going to do that. Click OK. That should give us uh, two nice equal surfaces to be working from. And it has. So inset. Now I'm going to click grow, deselect this piece, and put a quick bit of detail on here. Bevel by local polygon, reduce the height, and the outline amount. Click OK. OK, nice bit of detailing around there. Right then. What I need to do now is I'm just going to insert this by a very smaller mouth. Click apply, do the same over here. Remember we're just using eyesight to determine whether or not we're getting things right or not. So when we don't, we can complain and poke ourselves in the eye if we want to. Please note. 3D Palace and Digit Magazine do not endorse poking yourself in the eye. Okay, let's just pop that up there. And again, you remember why we're doing this, surely. Well, I hope you do anyway. You, That's a nasty shape. We don't like that very much. Because I forgot to extrude by a small bit. There we go. Now I can just do a quick mesh smooth, and we have the right shape again. Now, big extrude, whoosh, like this. A little bit of an inset.
going to deselect this one a moment. There goes auto save. Good old auto save. Click shrink. Click this one. Do a quick bevel. Oop, it's beveling by group. We don't want that. By polygon, rather. Click OK. To extrude this out again. There we go. Now let's have a look at our lower arm as it's kind of thudding into its final positioning here. I'm going to create a box. There we go. Right click, convert to editable polygon. Just move that up to there. Now this is where we're going to get our end attachments going on that connect to the big claw. Before they do, however, as per usual, we have to break up our model to add interest to it. I mean, let's face it, we could have created this scorpion using, you know, about 45 boxes with no detail on whatsoever. Okay, just going to extrude these out. Okay, move back. And now I want to do a couple of uh, target wells. One, two. Got a nice smooth edge moving down here now. Now I'm going to select these, move them in. It's quite simple compared to the rest of the stuff, so I think we're going to have to add some really rather pointless detail to it, just because we can. So, let's have a look at what we've got here. This is our separate object, box 1. And what we want to do is make this more exciting to look at when it connects to the end. So, things we can do are... Try and put some cuts in it. Without dying of sheer depression at 3D Studio Max's problems it has sometimes with cutting. and then extrude these out. There we go. Okay, that leads us to this section here. Inside this section here, which I really should connect to this one. Hang on, just attach it. Inside this section here, let's build the Muchos Grande Cylinder. Really big cylinder. Get a bit of height. And then I think let's put in some really pointless little things like this. By the way, on the day I'm recording this, today is International Go Pat a Ferret Day, so if you have a ferret in your back garden or a friend has a ferret, perhaps you could go and give it a hug. Please note, I do not advise this with wild ferrets and polecats. Okay. Insert this. And... So tempting. Oh, go on then. Why not? Hinge from edge. Pick our hinge. Pick one of these nice little straight ones here. Make it a minus angle of 90 degrees. Oh, look, it's going through something solid there. I'll make it positive then. There we go. Look OK. Insert it. 
Now we're going to extrude it until it's about level with here. There we go. Then once it's about level with there, I'm going to bevel it out a little bit. Increase the outline amount. Click OK. There we are. Juice that down. And then extrude it through. Click clunk. Deleted. There we go. And we made ourselves a really pointless bit of pipe work there. Look at that. Beautiful. What does it do? I've got a new idea! That's right. Good old sci-fi. You see, this is why it's good having concept sketches, so that most of the time you can just ignore them. Okay, nice little shape there that does nothing! That's right. So, this piece here is where our claw comes out of. So we've got a big hook claw, and we've got a kind of thumb claw. Think about it as if you're holding all your fingers together, fingers together in a kind of bird's nose-like stance, as if you were doing, you know, shadow puppets, and you are doing deformed badger. And uh, your thumb kind of grips it. That's claw shape. So what we're going to have is, our claw is going to come out from round about this point, and our thumb round about here. And they're going to be very spiky. Very, very sharp. Okay, so we'll do the claw. And there's no point breaking into our next lesson. We may as well just start from where we are, to be quite honest. So, this polygon here, what I want to do is just make a clone of it. Just this piece here, so I can just click and drag. There we go. Now we have a nice copy there that I can start building my next piece from. Where's it gone? Ugh, didn't copy properly. Silly thing. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Okay, we'll just do it a slightly different way then actually, because that wasn't the best way of doing it. So this is where our pivot's going to come out from. Not pivot, our kind of claw thing's going to come out from. We need to build a big, mightily impressive, stupidly overpowerful claw. A couple of ways we can do that. So, what I want to do is, I'm just going to click and drag this piece out, like that. Now I'm going to detach it, with my detach button gone. And this is going to be Big Claw. Now, connecting our Big Claw, we're going to have, well, obviously, a pipe. So, just extrude a tiny bit. OK, uh, smooth it, and extrude it to it just come through here, and then just delete it, there we go. And of course assisting it over here, um, let's see, insert this down a bit, there we are, and then extrude through, like that, pull it together like that. Tiny extrusion. Click OK. Do a mesh smooth. Extrude it back. A little. Insert a very little. And extrude out until we have a collision at which point we delete. There we go. So that's our parts that are connecting our claw on. Our claw is actually going to go back over the top of these, which will give it a bit more rotation than it actually will have. So let's start with this piece and move the pivot to the centre of the object. Right. Muchos grande cloros. So what's the best way of building this? couple of ways actually. Now I'm going to save and I'm going to move the, make the claw in the next lesson. So I'll see you in that part.